Hey y'all, super excited about today's conversation. I got to meet with Chris Hobe, an Atlanta-based uh, artist. I actually met him through my dad. My dad's an art dealer, buys, sells paintings, and um, Chris Hobe is a family favorite. I actually have a couple of his pieces in the house. We talked today about how he got started in art, how he's grown his business, leveraging social media, as well as live events. Uh, we talk about the future of art in Atlanta and how we might collaborate together. Excited to share this conversation with you, so let's get to it. Chris Hobe. I'm Chris Crava. I've been designing digital experiences for over 20 years. I've gotten to work with some pretty incredible people, and we have great conversations all the time, talking about business, creative, technology. I want to share some of those conversations with you so that maybe you can build better digital products and services. Thanks for coming. Yeah. I'm so glad we were able to get this happening. Yeah, for sure, dude. Yeah. Well, awesome. Just like kick this thing off. Was it a... Uh, Traditional like screen printing stuff like you started in like um... um I was doing like screen printed shirts at first but then um after that it was more or less um hand painted I was doing yeah. like hand, hand cut stencils and then um and then uh hand painting the t-shirts for in every single rapper that you could think of in Atlanta basically in yeah. Texas um I mean it was cool I was selling t-shirts for 130 bucks a piece so it was uh that that was like kind of surprising to me and then from there i was like if i could sell a 130 dollar t-shirt i think i could probably sell a, a you know 500 to a thousand dollar painting yeah yeah no doubt and how, how long ago was that like when you moved to atlanta and oh you know? uh, atlanta's probably been about i would say about 18 19 years i've been in atlanta okay. and okay. then um just solely doing art probably the last I would say about 12 years when Atlantic Station first opened up and everybody was going there and I was doing a, the festival there with my wife every single Friday, Saturday and Sunday and was able to make a living just working on the weekends, basically. But, you know, now it's, you know, Atlanta has its art shows, but now they almost have too many festivals and stuff to where it's, yeah. it's so saturated that you're not getting you're not getting the same customers that you normally would or not as many people come out as they used to, I would say. Yeah, it's been an interesting uh, evolution of of that sort of festival market. You know, my dad being in the art world for 20 plus years or so as well, dealing in paintings primarily, but a similar circuit, you know, and I'm, and I'm sure that's how you guys met. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's interesting how it's evolved. Like when you were, when you first started in it, what was the, the power of it? Like what was really, what made it a, a great, thing for you to start your business it was mainly just musicians and i was doing stuff that i had learned in college and um started to get into like stenciling mm -hmm. so i was doing like crazy i mean i'm talking like i'm cu cutting stencils morning noon and night all day long from the small paintings i got into the bigger paintings and then once i hit the uh basically the ceiling of what i could sell I stopped kind of doing musicians and then started moving towards doing whatever I wanted to do. So yeah. Yeah. I started, uh, started doing like political stuff. That was cool. And then, you know, people started to get irritated by the political stuff and <laughs> people were getting angry by it. And I didn't think that was the purpose of art was to make people angry. So yeah, right. now I just try to do stuff, you know, make people smile, kind of bring them back to childhood type stuff and make people laugh. Yeah. But I mean, I still like doing the political stuff still nowadays, but just not not to the extent that I was doing it before. Yeah, I have a couple of your pieces that are um, from that older set, like some of the political stuff and then just some of the art revolt sort of. Uh, yeah. I don't remember what model it is, but oh, yeah, I love I love. Yeah. yeah, it came off. Yeah. yeah. I love it because I have it set outside my kids' rooms. So like they open their bedroom door and it's like, boom, this huge, you know, yeah. four and a half foot piece. Uh, <laughs> It's awesome. Well, how did you tap into uh, the local hip hop community? I know, you know, <laughs> one day you posted uh, a picture of my dad alongside some of the Atlanta hip hop legends. I was just like blown away, like yeah. uh, Killer Mike and T.I. And, and a whole host of other yeah. folks. Like, how, how did you tap in or how did that all evolve? And I had met a um, stylist um, at one of the first art shows that I was doing. Um, well, that wasn't even an art show. It was just a Sweet Auburn Festival. Mm -hmm. And she was a stylist for um like Jeezy and Boys in the Hood, like Bad Boy South, basically. Yeah. And she was also like styling T.I. and all that. So I was doing hand painted shirts at the time. 
So when they had music videos, I was doing that. Eventually, we all ended up meeting each other, and they liked art and ended up buying stuff. So, but Killer Mike was probably the first out of everybody. Oh, for real? Yeah, <clears throat> I was doing a bunch of shirts for him, and I did a bunch for Ti. But I did. I met Killer Mike first, and started doing his. Um, I started off. I actually painted his first barber shop. He is, he's such an icon in our city because he's so community oriented. You know, he really, he really does try to build people up. If you're doing good stuff, man, he'll, he'll put some fire under you. And, you know. Oh, it definitely. I mean, he, he's uh, come out to the art festivals and the yeah. pictures of people in the booth and stuff like super good, dude. You know, one of the topics that I talk about quite a bit is, is community and technology in that, you know, the internet basically is one big community. And then within that, we sort of get tighter and tighter and find our audience. And, um, and ultimately, I feel like that's the key to successful business is really targeting your audience, knowing who your buyer is, and then bringing them what they need. So curious how you identify that audience or refine it more, you know, I mean, I still say social media is probably the strongest, but yeah, meeting people at festivals, a lot of times, like, mm -hmm. you know, you might not do really well at the festival, but it could be a month, it could be three months down the road, and that person owns a business and they want to do, want you to do like five pieces for them. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. if you don't do the festivals, you're missing out on that whole other market. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in the other market that I'm trying to get into and trying to work with and stuff like that is that NFT market. Is that right? So right now I'm just trying to digitize basically my whole catalog of paintings and trying to do like whole series of uh, of stuff so I could like, you know, just do releases. Yeah, that's what's interesting about the whole NFT market is just uh, the technology behind it um, is is challenging for me. Like I, I work on the blockchain relative to the crypto. And so then NFTs coming along and blowing up, it's really it's it's complicated from a sort of a business perspective of, of creating these networks, because essentially an NFT is, um, is a log, a link to a record of some kind. And, you know, the art side, it's pointing to a, a, a graphic or a, a painting or whatever, but it's not real, right? It, that, that graphic's just sitting on an image server somewhere and anybody can copy and paste it and have their own version of it, but they don't have the record of ownership. And so I think in that way, the NFT is neat as a compliment of I've got this physical painting and I also have evidence of NFT ownership. It's yeah. almost, it's like a certificate of ownership essentially. So if your physical painting gets stolen, you can yeah. always point to the NFT and be like, look, I, I own this. This is mine. Here's yeah, that. And I, yeah. And I paid and for insurance purposes, I paid X amount of money for this original art. That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I, I kind of look at NFTs like um, I got a, I had a collector who is also an artist, he's a sculptor. Mm -hmm. And um, he just launched his NFT line. And uh, he's basically minting off of his website. And then people are turning around and selling them on OpenSea or yeah. hitting up animators and all that stuff to animate some of the pieces that I have and, and whatnot, so. I've considered it too, because, you know, like actually producing the NFT is pretty easy when you're surrounded by art. But yeah, I mean, the opportunities out there, I mean, shoot, there's, and so many different stories of people oh just God. selling yeah. pictures of themselves for like a hundred days it's or like, tweets what? or whatever. I mean, yeah. the most ridiculous stuff, but I mean, they have the marketing behind it. They have the, exactly, clout, yeah. you know, to get yeah. the recognition. That's the trick that I'm really trying to figure out with NFTs when it comes to like, you know, corporate enterprise uh, level adoption of it as a piece of technology. And, you know, some of the things that I've been kicking around are like, um, uh for like a fast food restaurant with uh like mcdonald's with a monopoly game uh maybe you uh mint the monopoly pieces as nfts and if you win x number you know they go to your account and you can always look those up forever so maybe like 10 years ago i won the big prize i could pull that up and have evidence of that perpetual forever yeah and then if i win 10 unique things maybe i get access to a secret menu or different things yeah, like that yeah, yeah. you know could be cool, but then the challenge we have like on the technical implementation side is like, well, do we really need to leverage the blockchain to do that or NFT specifically? There's so many different existing methodologies by which we can connect these different things and secure them and connect them. What is the, the benefit of NFTs? And that's the real struggle I feel like 
right now on the enterprise level technical implementation side, it's like NFTs feel like a solution that's looking for a problem to fix, you know? Yeah. <laughs> People just don't know what to do with it. It's like, yeah. <laughs> it's tough. But I think ultimately, if we can think about the customer and what they want and need, and like I was saying before, like meet them where they are, then 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 maybe it makes sense, you know? Yeah. Where do you get your inspiration from? I mean, I definitely see, you know, iconic characters from our, our youth and in our- Yeah, in just, ba just basically like old like comics and, yeah. old, you know, just stuff like that is, you know, reminds you of like waking up on a Saturday or Sunday morning watching cartoons or something. I just try to make stuff as, as funky and as crazy and trippy as possible. Yeah, you're doing that very well, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to step it up a couple notches. Like, you could do a painting, right? And I don't know how they do this, but I'm trying to figure it out or trying to find somebody who does know. They do this painting, and then you could put your uh, cell phone up to the painting, and the painting will literally move. Okay. So yeah. somewhere in that painting has to be like, some kind of coding or QR code or something uh -huh. and it and it will send something to your phone and it actually makes like if you have somebody smoking in the pain the oh, yeah. is going to be actually moving smoking smoke will be coming out of their mouth all of that oh sure yeah that's a good idea so I saw that down at Art Basel um from some of the videos and I was like dang dude that was that was real slick because it gets people to take out their phones yeah and then your uh, information is probably your phone automatically once Absolutely. you put your phone up and scan it yeah that's interesting well augmented reality and virtual reality leveraging technologies like that could be really fun you're sort of blending blending the real and the and the sort of fantasy at the same time it's exactly yeah it's interesting mix of like what you're what you want to explore in your own you know your own direction but then you also get clients who hit you up with ideas and requests um how do you balance that? Do you find both insp inspiring in different ways or? Um... Uh, normally anything from a client is, is it's a challenge because most of the time the client wants like a style that might be something I did eight or 10 years ago. Oh yeah. Yeah. So uh, I had a, a recent client, good client too. Um, he wanted a uh, painting of his wife and I was like, dude, like I could do a perfect in this new style that I got blah, blah, blah. He said, no, 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 no. Style <laughs> I want like, that old stuff. I want that style from like 10 years ago. I was like, oh, God, I haven't done that in like 10 years. I was like, I don't know how good it's going to look, but we'll see. Yeah, but it came out. It came out good. Yeah. Um, his wife loved it. So, um, but yeah, anytime a client normally wants something, it's normally something that is, is in the past. And normally when you leave it in the past, it's like, all right, I moved on to better things. I yeah. think I this, these paintings look way better than those paintings did, but yeah, yeah. they like that style. And it's like, all right. Yeah. I've got my first uh, commission conversation happening next week. Um, Cause I posted that, that last painting I posted on LinkedIn. And I think that's where if I develop any kind of portrait business, I think that's where my clients will be. Cause I, you know, I love doing like head on faces and um, our peers, they're entering the boardroom now. And these people are the type that would buy a portrait and hang it up in a boardroom or, you know, in an office. So you you use uh, LinkedIn um, to promote? Yeah, man. LinkedIn has really stepped up their social media. Um, they've really recognized that they are a social media platform over the last, I would say, five years. In the last two to three years, really embraced video. You can stream live to LinkedIn. You can post long form videos, short form videos. You can do, they have little stories, a lot like Instagram and TikTok as oh, well. Wow. Yeah, you have to check that out. That's kind of crazy because that's basically where yeah. you know the CEOs and all that are hanging out at, basically, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, if somebody that has five grand to drop on a piece of art, yeah, that's where they're at. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy, man. I didn't know that at all. Yeah, yeah, that's nuts. And I've been seeing people talk about LinkedIn. I'm like, LinkedIn's still around? Oh man, I'm on it. I'm on it all day, every day. Like, I just, it's, uh, it's huge. Yeah. Well, man, I really appreciate you uh, coming on today, man. I'm excited. Oh, no, 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 yeah, definitely, man. This is fun. We need to do it more often. Maybe we could do it where we're both paint at the same time. Oh, man, that would be awesome. Man. Yeah, um, that would be fun. And then just talk. Yeah. Do the same type of shit and we just talk while we're um, painting. That would be amazing. Um, I, I have done uh, three live streams to Twitch. I was like, you know, let me let me at least try out the technology and, and see yeah. how it goes.
and you know nobody nobody's watching me but it was really cool to like test out the platform it's really easy to like team up with folks in that environment maybe we could all just keep keep bouncing around ideas and yeah you know, and stuff like that yeah we'll figure we'll we'll keep working together i think this is going to be a banner year it's going to be a big one all of us coming out of this covid nonsense into back into yeah. the world i'm excited yeah. so yeah let's stay in touch and uh right. definitely man i'll talk to you later all right man we'll all see right. you